um, on the way home from church, we were hit by a drunk driver going over 80 miles an hour with his lights off. And so we were all in this family Sienna van, um, my husband um, and I, and then our kids were sitting behind us, Jen and Josh. And in one second, um, our life just changed forever. And he hit us with such force that he dropped the engine out of his truck and he went over top of our van and... Hi guys, I'm your host, Megan Van Diepender, and this is the Empowerhood Podcast. I am so happy to have you here. You know, motherhood is hard, and we are going to talk about all of the hard things that just are not talked about enough. So buckle up and enjoy this episode. Uh, so everyone out there listening today, we have Linda Barrick here with us, and she is going to tell her incredible story of a tragedy for her family that um, they turned into spreading hope, you know, really all over the world. Um, so Linda, I'm so excited for you to tell your story and everyone to hear it. Um, now, why don't you start off with telling us a little bit about you? Who is Linda? Okay. Goodness. Nobody asked me who <laughs> Linda is. Um <laughs> Well, I, you know, I'm just a mom that I love my kids. I love my family, love my husband and, um, you know, just how you try to do everything right. You're trying to make good choices and, um, there you are. Yay. I don't know what happened. That's, That's okay. It's ha- it happens. I don't know. Okay. Technical difficulties. <laughs> yeah. No, that's great. So start over. Tell us a little okay. bit about you. Okay. Um, I'm just an ordinary person um, that's a mom and a wife, and um, I loved raising my family. I loved spending time with my kids, and um, I had a lot of Bible studies in my home over the years, and, um, you know, I just, I love people, so I'm energized by people and fun, and um, loved volunteering at the school and, and doing things with my family, and never expected you know, that tragedy would hit, um, and it changed our life forever. Yeah. Yeah. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Um, what happened? Okay. It was November 5th, 2006. So it's been 17 years ago and it was just on a Sunday night. Our whole family was at church and my dad was a preacher. He spoke on revelation that night and, um, my daughter Jen was 15, my son Josh was 11, and Jen was singing in her first choir concert with her school choir, and um, on the way home from church, we were hit by a drunk driver going over 80 miles an hour with his lights off, and so we were all in this family Sienna van, um, my husband um, and I, and then our kids were sitting behind us, Jen and Josh, and in one second, um, our life just changed forever. And he hit us with such force that he dropped the engine out of his truck and he went over top of our van and we were all medevaced to different hospitals within hours of each other. And we all suffered critical injuries. We should have, we should have died and yet God spared us that night. And my daughter, Jennifer, had a traumatic brain injury and it was a global injury all through her brain and um, no one thought she would live through the night and then she was in a coma for five weeks and doctors said she'll never walk again she'll never talk again and so i just want to give anyone listening today hope that god still does miracles and Mm. um he has a greater plan and you can trust him yeah Um, yeah life is hard no when this happened, you said that you were transferred to different hospitals. So were you with Jennifer or were you not in the no. same hospital as her? Yeah, no. Okay. So we we actually live in Lynchburg, Virginia, and it's a, it's a smaller town. And so because of Jen's injuries, when they realized she was under 16 years of age, they flew her to um, UVA, which is in Charlottesville, which is an hour and a half away. Oh, wow. So I didn't oh, wow. see her for 16 days. Oh, um, my God. Cause because of your own injuries. Yes. Yeah. So I was in the hospital here and different friends and family were at UVA. And then my husband and son were taken an hour from Lynchburg to Roanoke. And um, so we were scattered. Oh and the God. only thing I could do was pray. You know, my my whole left side was crushed. My, my ribs were crushed. Um, my lung had collapsed. Uh, yeah. my, you know, my arm, my foot crushed. So I couldn't, like 
I couldn't do anything for myself, but yeah. I have my mouth. And in those moments, you know, the best thing we can do is cry out to God for mercy yeah. and help. And, yeah. I mean, what were your thoughts during that time? I mean, obviously praying to God, but as a mother, like how did you feel as a mom in those moments where you felt so helpless and you're not even with your children that are injured too? It was hard. It was it was very hard. Um, and yet God brought an army of people to help us. And those ladies that had come every week to my house for Bible study, they were taking care of me in the hospital um, night and day um, because then family was with Jen and yeah. um, my husband's family was with him. But, um, you know, it's devastating. And yet in, in those darkest moments, God's presence is with you in a way that's unexplainable. And um, I had been, this sounds weird, but I had been doing Bible studies on prayer and the posture of bowing and getting on your knees. And so when you're squeezed by trauma of life, whatever you've been pouring in is what comes out. So I'm literally the night of the wreck in the hospital saying, tell everyone in the waiting room to get on their knees yeah. <laughs> and to beg, them, beg God to save Jen's life. I knew yeah. that, you know, yeah. her life was hanging in the balance. And, um, and so that's kind of what was coming out of me, but also I, God gives you this unbelievable faith in the moment that I don't think it came from me, but I, I just knew that God was going to save her and that he had a plan. Um, but it was so hard. And, um, yeah. you know, you, even after I was able to see Jen, my, again, my left arm didn't work. So I, and I'm in a wheelchair, so I couldn't physically help, you know, she's in, you know, she's in a coma. She has diapers. She, so my friends are helping the nurses and all, all I can do is sit there and watch. But again, I had my mouth <laughs> and I could yeah. pray out loud and, and sing praise songs and yeah. anything to try to connect with her. Right. Um, <clears throat> but it's hard, you know, I think as moms, we, you know, we, we try to be in control, you know, it's yeah, just yeah. our human yeah. nature. And when our kids are hurting, there is nothing worse than that. And, um, but, but we can trust God and, and prayer is powerful. And, um, the most miraculous part of our story, there's so many miracles. And I mm. wrote a book mm -hmm. miracle for Jen, like just how God was in all the details. But, um, when she was emerging from her coma, she couldn't talk to us. Um, she just, we would get moans and groans and her arms and legs were, were just thrashing back and forth. And, um, during that time, she started talking to Jesus, and it was an uninjured voice. It was the only time we could understand her, and she was having a two-way conversation with him. Wow. And again, yeah. for the moms listening, when we can't minister to our kids, the Holy Spirit can minister to them, yeah. even when we're not with them. Like, yeah. God, you know, yeah. prayer transcends time and space. So, you know, the whole time that I couldn't see Jen, I was asking God, would you please comfort her in her coma? Somehow help her not be scared. Yes. Let her know yeah. you're there. And he was. He was comforting her. And as she was emerging, she was talking to him when she couldn't talk to I was going to say, so she couldn't talk to you. You, but she could no. speak fluently to to whatever yes. to God. Okay. Yes, and it was the only time she wasn't confused, and um, she was just saying, "Lord, should I go to heaven or should I stay on this earth? Yeah. And what yeah. would you have me do?" Oh and God. she's got the feeding tube, you know, coming out of her, and she's getting all tangled up in this feeding tube. It's in her stomach, and she's saying, "Okay, God, I'll do it," but there aren't words to describe you, and. Um, she was just praising him. She wasn't asking for anything. She was just saying, Lord, you're so good. You're so faithful. You're glorious. And mm -hmm. she wasn't fully awake yet. It's so hard to explain, but somehow she was in God's presence yeah. and she got a glimpse of the glory of God. And so, I mean, now 17 years later, I mean, she doesn't complain. She just has this contagious joy about her. Um, she still struggles in a lot of ways. But, yeah, I was going to ask know. you, so how have her injuries um, from that time, you know, does she still have problems now or did they all, um, did her brain recover completely? No. So it's been a very long journey. So we had many years of just pain in her head, uh, like 
not even migraine, like worse than a migraine, just pressure in her head. Um, her body was hypersensitive, so we had to brush her every two hours with a brush um, to desensitize her because you couldn't hardly touch her. Um, and, she, you know, she went a long time without eating, just so many stages. Mm -hmm. It's like when one stage would heal, then the other was glaring, you know, yeah. the next problem was yeah. glaring. And, um Again, without a relationship with God, I don't know how anyone survives that. Yeah. Um, and, I mean, over the years, little by little, her short-term memory, so she had a memory of things that happened in her past, but nothing short-term. Okay. So she would ask the same questions over and over oh, again. Okay. Um, we couldn't let her out of our sight because she'd get lost. Um, and... Um, you know, just, just the normal things that we do easily are hard, but God keeps healing her. She's doing really well today. And again, she has such joy and God has given us a ministry called Hope Out Loud. And yes. um, we go around the country and now all over the world sharing yeah. the hope in Jesus and that he is real and that you can trust him. Um, and so part of her story too, she came out of this coma saying, I'm going to have a ministry to the world. And I'm like, Jen, <clears throat> you can't even walk or find the bathroom. I mean, how are you going to have a ministry to the world? Right. And she doesn't know her name, but she knows every praise song, yeah. every verse she had hidden in her heart. And, um, and now just in the last few years, her little prayer book, the prayers she was yes. praying, coming, coming out of the coma and the verses we would pray out loud. It's in a little book and it's being translated now, um, in Russian and in Africa and Amazing. just all over Spanish. Yes. Um, so, so we are literally, um, she's healed enough to go on mission trips and, okay. you know, partly, I guess what I want to share is that as moms, you know, we beg God for things. That was a lot of my journey. You know, I had to stop begging, um, and start praising him in advance for what he was going to do. Because <clears throat> so often when we pray, we tell God how to answer our prayer requests. Mm -hmm. And then when he doesn't do what we tell him to do, when he doesn't fix our kids the way we want him to fix them, yeah. or our marriage, or our, you know, our family, um, we get disappointed with God. And that's not what prayer is. There's nothing in the Bible that says, um, tell me exactly what you want and I will do it. Yes. But we can pray scripture out loud. We can pray the Lord has not given me a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. Those are the prayers he's going to answer. And um, my daughter reminds me, Mom, God is, God is not of our dimension. Yes. He's not of this world. So why do we tell him how to answer? Do we want our limited answers or do we want his unlimited power? Yeah. And God can do things in our families that we couldn't even think to ask him for because he's working on multiple levels. And um, so we don't want to limit him and be so narrow minded about that quick fix. Like I just wanted him to heal Jen and make her who she was before yes. um, that cheerleader, that soccer player, that straight A student, you know, if you yes. can imagine at age 15. And yet God had a much greater plan that she was going to impact thousands mm -hmm. because she'd had a brain injury and because she didn't know where she was or where she was going, but she had this overflowing joy. And um, spiritually, she wasn't injured. The Holy Spirit was not disabled in her. And for all of us, the Holy Spirit is never disabled. If you know Christ as your Savior, um, the Holy Spirit, God himself lives in you and he lives in your children. If, mm -hmm. if, you, if they've accepted Christ and, and one thing I've learned too is just Holy Spirit, you live in me and you live in my son who lives, you know, hour yeah. and a half. Away. And if this is true, if what I'm worried about is true, would you speak it to him? You know, instead of me trying to manipulate it and control right. it, but right. Holy Spirit, right. you speak that to him. Yes. And if I'm overreacting, then God, speak that to me and help me to let go and trust you. It all comes down to can we trust God, you know, like yes. a child. Yes. Yeah. I mean, Jen is incredible. Like like I said, I was able to see you guys speak. And, um, you know, the first thing that I did notice about Jen was her joy and her authentic joy. You know, it's just a glow that comes right off of her that you see immediately. I even had like a hard time explaining it to my husband. I'm like, I can't even explain to you this girl's joy. Like she just like is just radiating 
um, just has such a presence and it just is so authentic. Um, and just the plan to come out of like an injury like that and just be like, this is right. I have a plan. God gave me a plan. Um, just in itself. Cause if you think of like people that we all go through circumstances, you know, maybe not as horrible as this. Um, but you know, we get depressed, you know, we get doubt. We're like, what is going on? My life is ruined. And just seeing Jen and being like, holy crap like it's just it it, it really does she screams Uh hope and it is incredible to see and even your book and her prayer journal which i will link i'll link them below um, okay are just such a nice guide um the prayer journal is amazing just to see what went through her head during this this time and again just like she never had a doubt in her mind that um, you know, as she's in a hospital bed, this is where she's supposed to be. And this is the plan that God has for her. And um, it really is so incredible, Linda. Um, and I know you get to see it every day. Uh, it, it's just it's so inspiring. Um, and as a mom, I loved what you said about how you had to stop trying to fix her and make her who yeah. she used to be and really accept who she's becoming. Yeah. Um yeah. Another thing that I thought was really incredible um, in your book and when I heard you speak is forgiveness. You guys were able to um, forgive this man that was drunk driving. Um, Can you talk to me a little bit about that? How did that um, come about? Like, did it take a long time to do this or was it something you immediately did? Yes. Well, first of all, I think forgiveness is something that all of us have to do Mm -hmm. Um, and it's something we probably all struggle with because when someone hurts us, um, it's the last thing humanly that we want to do is forgive them. And the lie that Satan says to us is you don't have to forgive because you did nothing wrong or um, you don't have to forgive. You know, you don't have to let them off the hook for what they did. And I love how my daughter Jen says this. She says, I forgave for my freedom and to take the drunk driver off my hook and put him on God's hook so that I'm free. And when you when you do that, you're trusting God to deal with them. And and so for me as Jen's mom, it was a much longer journey. Um, she did it much easier. Um, but again, she doesn't have the emotional pain that the rest of us have. She just has this joy. But um, when Jen was diagnosed with thyroid cancer a few years after the wreck, um, it was just hard. And as her mom, I started really struggling and just crying out to God. And I love that we can tell God our thoughts and that we're struggling and that we hate this. And I felt like just, Lord, why? Yeah. Why does Jen have to keep suffering because of the sin of someone else? Yeah. Hasn't she been through enough? And I'm sure many people can relate to that. Just yes. Lord, why? Mm-hmm. But we can't change it. You know, you can't change it. And and so I realized, like, instead of just saying why, why, um, to really open our hands and say, what, God, what are you going to do with this? I can't change it, but what are you going to do? And what Jen, what God showed me through Jen having the cancer, it was the thyroid cancer was spreading into her lymph nodes mm-hmm. and we had to get it out. And God just spoke to my heart, Linda, the bitterness in you is spreading and it's a cancer of your soul. And mm-hmm. so when we talk about forgiveness, it's getting that bitterness out and mm-hmm. handing it to God to hold. Yes. And so, um, you know, God commands us to forgive, first of all, to receive his forgiveness for ourselves, but then to forgive others because it's for our own good. Mm -hmm. And I think of Jesus on the cross, he's dying on the cross and they're killing him. And he says, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they're doing. Yes. And they keep on killing him. They don't change their bad behavior, but Jesus is our example. And it's almost like a hot potato. The quicker we can forgive and hand it up to God, the better. Mm -hmm. And so for me, forgiveness has become more between me and God than me and that other person. Okay. Because, yes, the drunk driver, but when a friend hurts us or a family member Mm -hmm. hurts us, that is so hard. And I can't control someone else's behavior. We can't Mm -hmm. control they're yeah. sorry or if yeah. they're not sorry um you know jen wrote a letter to the drunk driver that's just beautiful saying i forgive you and i pray for you every day and we never heard back from his family and that's okay because it was for her freedom and it was between 
her and God, not her and and the drunk driver or her and the family. Does that make sense? Yes. So, so we are forgiving for our own freedom. And it's just whatever is consuming in our head, that person that it has control over you, when you forgive them and when you put them on God's hook, they no longer have control over you anymore. Mm-hmm. And you don't have to have all your thoughts about that person. You yeah. can trust mm-hmm. God. Um, so for me, forgiveness is is more that like God says forgive just as I have forgiven you because it's for your freedom it's so we won't be so consumed in our head with that person any longer okay yeah because we can't change what they did even um just you know we pray with a lot of people and praying with a, a sweet girl this week whose father abused her and he gets sentenced this month and um just the pain and and you know um uh, this this sweet teenage girl, I mean, been in mental hospitals and, you know, yes. um, it's yeah. just horrific. But even the sentencing is not going to take her pain away. Yeah. But but to be able to say, God, I put them on your hook. I choose to forgive. I choose to get this bitterness out because I want you yes. to use me, yeah. Lord. I don't want him to control my whole life. And and um, what God showed her through praying is that God's going to use her to help a lot of people. And she loves to journal and she loves to do art, you know, mm-hmm. in this pre- girl that, you know, and the other thing when she prayed, God showed her like, this is just a few chapters of your book, you know, right. and got a whole lot of more pages left to your story. And so right. don't let that one person ruin your whole life and define your whole life because God has many more pages to all of our stories. Yes. Yeah, that's so true. I love how you said, um, instead of asking why God ask what God, because mm-hmm. that's huge because I feel like we're always like, why God? Or we're blaming God for yes. our circumstance. Was that really hard for you when you found out Jen had cancer? No, I guess, yes. where did the cancer, she got cancer after the accident? Yes. She got it a few years after. And, um, you know, several nurses said probably because of all the CT scans on her head oh. and all the radiation because your thyroid is oh a filter. Um, and again, in God's grace, we found it quick enough. Yes. Um, she did have to have radiation, which was a whole other story. Yeah. Um, she was radioactive, but, um, you know, so far to this day, her scans are good. Oh, and good. so okay. she is healed, good. you know, in, in Jesus name, but, um, you know, her thyroid was removed. So, um, okay. you know, she, uh, she still has to go anybody. And that's a good thing to know. Anyone that's gone through cancer, they still have the blood work, you know, every six months, it's, yes. it's still an every year thing, every six month thing of, you know, trusting God on the journey. Yes. And, um, like there's so, always that chance of it coming back. You're saying like they have to check. Yeah. There's okay. always that little chance yes. that you're just waiting to hear okay. and making sure. So we do body scans and, um, but again, I think our whole life is just being dependent on God yes. for all of us. Uh, whatever it looks like, but he wants us to trust him just like a child, you know, mm-hmm. would trust. Um, and he's our heavenly father who will never abandon us. And he's with us in yes. these hard times, but definitely I struggled. Um, everything like came back. So you think you've forgiven, you think you've yes. healed and then yeah. something happens and right. it triggers you. Yeah. So yeah. I think Jen getting cancer triggered me again to like, Lord, are you good? Right. Have you been good? Have right. you been good? I mean, I think that's such right. a common problem yeah. to immediately blame God and think that mm-hmm. he abandoned you. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And so yeah. when we talk about forgiveness, sometimes we have to forgive God. I mean, there's not a verse that says that, but but really stop blaming him. Yeah. And and that's where if we can praise him in the midst of the storm, like praise him for who he is, um, that really helps sing praise songs out loud, uh, choose to focus on who he is, that he's all powerful. And this life is just a dot. I used to just say that. That was my little faith statement. This life is a dot. I can do anything for a dot on the timeline of yes. living forever in heaven. And so if I live here on this earth 80 years or, or whatever it is, it's a dot. And then sometimes I'd say it's a half a dot, you know, and yeah. Um, yeah. Jen started calling me polka dot because that was one of her first long-term <laughs> memories, you know, her first short-term memory was polka dot. So, oh, that's awesome. Um, but that was how I got through the day. I'm in the wheelchair. Great. Jen, you know, can't eat. And she's got cortical blindness. And we had to have help around the clock. And it yes. just felt yeah. like we were never going to even make it through a day. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, that's 
I mean, you have to take it one day at a time, right? And really just trust. Now, how has your life changed? So you guys started a business, Spreading Hope. Um, Mm -hmm. Now, tell us a little bit about that. Well, so we we never planned to do it, um, but uh, Jen was at the UVA um, hospital, and they picked her as the comeback kid of the year. Okay. And so we were actually asked to raise money for the Children's Miracle Network, and so we Jen, who had no memory, doesn't know she's hurt, they'd put a camera in front of her and the Holy Spirit would show up and she would say all these amazing things. Um, <laughs> like, the doctors were great, the hospital was great. <laughs> and she was giving people hope and her joy. And so, um, and then we just went to like a couple youth groups in, in our, our home church to just say thank you for praying for us. And um, you couldn't prepare Jen ahead of time, but if you asked her to pray on stage or you asked her a question, um, again, the joy of the Lord. Um, and so she had this new gift where she could encourage people and she may not... Um, you know, be able to plan what she was going to say, but she could pray and God would speak to everybody in the room and give her the words in the moment. And um, so we actually, we spoke at a women's event um, and I think I cried through the whole thing. And, and it was a, it was a conference of a bunch of pastor's wives and they all went home to their churches in Virginia and um, started inviting us to all their churches on different weekends. And that's kind of how it started. Yeah. And, Um, And then when we went into full-time ministry, my husband quit his job and he um, came full-time. We did Hope Out Loud and we went as a family. And so we speak in a lot of churches on Sunday mornings. Uh, We just spoke last Sunday um, and we go overseas now and do a lot of um, crusades and rallies and just however God wants to use us. But we do women's events too. That's how I met you. Yes, at a women's event. Yeah. Now everyone in the family is involved, right? Yes. Okay. Our son is now involved full time and he's really doing a lot of the missions overseas and um, he's a great speaker. I mean, again, none of this is us. It is just God has left us here to share the gospel. And um, that is one thing that really changed for me before the wreck. Um, I was leading Bible studies and doing Bible studies with Jen's cheerleading group. And, um, but we weren't personally leading anyone to Christ. We weren't surrounding our, we were surrounded by Christians. And, you know, when your life is almost gone, you realize how short life is. And that really, if we're still alive today, which if anybody's listening, you're still alive today, God is not done using you on this earth. And he has people that he wants you to share your story with Mm -hmm. people that um, you will reach in your neighborhood at work that we will never meet. And they won't listen to us, but they'll listen to you. And um, the pain that you go through, um, God never wastes that pain. He never wastes um, a hard time. And, you know, another huge thing that has really changed my life Uh, in the last few years is as moms, we take on a lot of pressure and burdens. Um, Do you ever feel like, you know, just something heavy, a heavy weight is on your shoulders or, and again, we're trying to fix our families, fix our kids. Yes. Um, But whatever that weight or burden is, if you take a moment to really ask God, like, what is it that I'm taking on? Because God's word says his, his burden is easy and his yoke is light. And our, our enemy is Satan. It is not the person that hurt us. It's Satan. And he lies to all of us. And so he uses a lot of the similar lies with all of us. He makes us feel like we're rejected or we're unloved or we're not enough. Yes. Uh, we're unworthy. Uh, and none of us are worthy. Jesus is worthy. But but it's who we are in Christ. The truth is, like, who we are in Christ. We're redeemed. We're priceless. We're loved. We're chosen. And so... If we can start recognizing when we take on these bur- burdens and weights that, okay, God, I'm believing a lie somewhere, or, yeah. or if we can just say out loud to God everything that's swirling in our head, every doubt, every struggle, everything we're trying to fix that we can't, just try either journaling it or saying it out loud and say, God, okay, what do I do with all of this? Yes. And is there a lie I'm believing? And and he wants to give us truth to replace those lies, um, yeah. just our identity in Christ, who we are in Christ. And once we accept Christ, we are a daughter of the King forever. 
Satan cannot have us, Mm -hmm. but he will do whatever he can to distract us and keep us so busy or keep us so swirling in our own stuff that we don't have energy to reach out and help others. And really that's when the healing comes in. And for us with Hope Out Loud and starting a ministry, I mean, Jen could not do anything normal. You know, she couldn't go back to school really without help. She couldn't sit in the classroom, but she could pray over people. So every yeah. day we're like, okay, who could we help? Who could we encourage? Yes. And when yeah. you try to reach out and help others, it takes the focus off of your own pain. And, you know, yes. anytime yeah. we use our story to share Christ, it gives us purpose greater than ourselves, And yes. we were all yeah. created to need purpose. So. Yes. And there is something so powerful about sharing your story because you really have no idea what people are going through and someone can relate to your story. I mean, one of the things that really stuck with me when I heard Jen speak um, was her surrender. Um, You know, just starting the day off being like, I surrender this day to you, God, because I think a lot of times as moms, we're trying to control everything, like you said, and Mm -hmm. we don't even have the control. I mean, one of my favorite things to to say is, all right, the battle belongs to you, God, because I mean, how many battles do we come up with every single day, whether it's like our child or, you know, something comes up that we can't control. And it's really just like surrendering that burden of trying to control everything. And Jen just did that so so beautifully just with everything that is going on in her life even now you know the accident cancer and even just the struggles that she still has from these injuries and she said she just starts her day off like that so I've been doing that and it really I mean I'm not saying it doesn't come up that like you know I'm trying to control everything I'm definitely a type A uh, personality Um, but just having that in the back of your mind to just be like all right I have to just surrender all this to God all my doubts my worries my anxieties he has control Absolutely. And it really does make such a difference um, because, you know, there's never going to be perfection, right? Stuff always comes right. up and, right. you know, we can either and take it on or surrender. <laughs> absolutely. And perfection is another one of Satan's lies that he mm-hmm. uses in us that we have to be perfect or we didn't do something right or yes. we weren't a good mom or we weren't a good wife. Like, so so if we can start recognizing those lies and, and again, it feels like a heavy weight or a burden, Um and I do. I love how so Jen rolls out of bed and lands on her knees first thing. Yes. And she says, I don't want to take one step without the Lord. And for her, it's I don't want to miss one plan you have for me today, God. Yes. Um, I know you have divine appointments for me at the grocery store or wherever I go. I'm going to smile at people. Yeah. I'm going to ask them how they're doing and um, just make an eye contact. And, and again, thinking about others instead of like thinking about yourself and all your problems. Mm-hmm. Um for me, it's more the surrender is more get on my knees and say, God, empty me, like you said, of all my fears, all yes. my anxiety, all my struggles, my controlling things. And and God, I want to walk in the power of your Holy Spirit today. I want to be filled with you. Yeah. Um, I have a choice every day to do things in my own strength and be exhausted or walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes. And it's so freeing and, and to just make it a habit, whether it's first thing landing on your knees or when you're driving to work, you know, whenever it is to really, um, cause when we're asking God for those divine appointments and when we're seeking him, he's, he's gonna, he's gonna orchestrate our day and, and having a little margin in our day where we do have time to talk to people and look at them in the face and, and with our children too. Yes. Um, I just want to encourage all the moms out there, you know, children don't do what you say, they do what you do. Mm -hmm. And so the most important thing you can do is have a love relationship with God and they will see that. And um, even if they don't say it, they see it. And they also see when you ask them for forgiveness, you know, when you let them know, like, I'm not perfect, I mess up but I have to talk to Jesus about this and, you know, pray out loud with your kids. We used to pray in the car out loud for everything, you know, or let's just all thank God out loud for one person or thank God for something or pray for a friend or making it fun that it's Mm. not a duty or a drudgery. It's a love relationship. And, and teach our kids that Jesus is right there. You know, yeah. he's right beside us. And that was one of the huge stories about Jen in the hospital. She was completely blind and could not see me, her own mom. And yet she saw Jesus standing right beside her. Wow. And um, he's with us. He is beside us. And we forget that. But we can talk out loud to him 
all through our day. And um, so that's something great we can teach our kids. Yes. Um, and, and that God's fun. You know, it, yeah. it's not a drudgery. It's not a legalism thing. It's, you know, if you like to dance, turn on the praise music and dance with your kids in the kitchen and have, teaching our kids to have a relationship. Yeah. and a relationship and that the Holy Spirit's in them at school, wherever they go, they can talk to God. He's, he's right there yeah. with them yeah. in them. Um, so it's, it's a great thing. Part of too, um, Jennifer was so injured. The only part of her that was not injured was the Holy Spirit. So when she came home from the hospital, the only way to get her out of bed or have a conversation with her was to, we would either, we did the three P's. We would either pray out loud, praise songs out loud, or the promises of God's word out loud. We had to connect with the Holy Spirit to get her to get out of bed, to get her oh, to get wow. in the car, to go to therapy. And so we did that to survive all day, every day. We were singing praise songs, praying out loud, um, quoting the promises of God's word out loud. And I didn't realize it in the moment, but we, we did that for years. We still do that. And it really helped heal my heart and my husband's heart. Exactly. You know, when we, again, when we focus on praising God and, and taking power over our brain, you know, our yes. brain believes yeah. what we speak out loud. And so right. um, mm -hmm. speaking positive, speaking truth, speaking yes. God's word is so important. Yeah. And I mean, what you guys do now must be so rewarding being able to travel and help, you know, thousands and thousands of people by sharing yeah. your story and having Jen speak. Um, I mean, I highly recommend it to everyone listening to definitely check out your Instagram. I'll link that below. Yes, Do you have a website great. too, Linda, right? Yes. Okay. It's hope out, hopeoutloud.com. Okay. And um, we, we also have a YouTube page, uh, Hope Out Loud on YouTube. And there are so many videos. There's a whole Beauty Marks uh, series of videos that okay. um, is really – um, with Jen and I, but my story of how do we allow God to heal our scars, yes, uh, you know, yeah. the wounds in our heart and turn them into beauty marks and purpose and, um, but lots, lots of videos on there. Okay. That yeah. All right. Yeah. I'll get that from you and I will link that below okay. for everyone. If you could give advice to anyone out there today, like tr struggling to get through, um, really mm -hmm. any circumstance, but a tragic cir circumstance, what would you say to them? I would say start by just saying out loud to God everything in your head, whether it's journaling it out. Um, I mean, messy. You can just write it, scribble it on a piece of paper or um, just talk to God out loud because he already knows. He already knows when we're mad. He already knows when we're doubting him. But a relationship Think about your relationship with your husband or your best friend. Like you run to tell them the things you're mad about, the things you're happy about. Mm -hmm. So so just start talking to God out loud. Even if you're mad at him, even if you're still blaming him, start talking to him and, and start asking him questions. He wants to speak to you. And, um, and he's not scared of our hard questions, but um, he wants to heal our hearts. He wants to heal the wounded places in our heart. And for the painful things that we cannot change, he's going to use them for good. Okay. And that's why when we can look for someone who's hurting worse than us or just somebody that needs a smile, if we can take a meal to somebody, if we can write a note, mm -hmm. use your gifts, whatever you're gifted at yes. that brings you joy. But um, taking a note to the person at the grocery store or the neighbor or um, looking for somebody that needs a ride somewhere, you know, just it takes the focus off of us. And, mm -hmm. and the other thing is to really just choose to sing praise songs out loud. We have learned so much about the brain. We've been to so much brain therapy. Yes. And our brains have all these negative thoughts. Like it can have hundreds of thousands of thoughts in a minute and you don't even realize it. Mm -hmm. um, but if you are singing praise songs out loud, at least you're taking power over your brain yes. for a little yeah. bit. And when you're in those moments where you feel triggered and that fight or flight, just pause and stop and breathe in deeply. Like breathe in three seconds, breathe out six seconds and just say out loud what's happening. You don't even have to fix it. You can't fix it. But, okay, this is what's happening. This yes. is why I'm upset. And um, ask God for a faith statement. Like, God, I'm safe. I'm safe in your arms, you know. I'm yes. safe. Or, um, like I would say, this life's just a dot, you know. Yes. I can do anything for a dot just yes. to get through my day. But 
to, to just start talking to God and, and seek out, don't be isolated. We yeah. need community. Yeah. We need friends. So even if it's one friend, ask God to give you that one friend that can pray with you, talk to you, go on walks with you so you're not alone. And and just be real with your kids. Don't tell them all the details to scare them, but let them see your relationship with God. Let them see that you kneel and bow. Let them see that you talk out loud, you dance in the kitchen yeah. with praise yeah. music, you know, that God's fun and exciting. And, um, yeah, our kids learn about God from watching us. Yes. And yeah. again, do they, do they want what we have? You know, if we're not joyful, if we're mean all the time, do they want that? You know? <laughs> and so we're not perfect. Right. But, and, but to, you know, again, to be able to apologize and say, I'm so sorry I overreacted or I'm so sorry I'm yes. stressed. Let's sing a praise song out loud. Like you can teach them by, by what you do, you know, yes. in stressful moments to talk to God, to sing to him and do those three P's. It'll, it'll be life changing. Yeah, that's huge. Thank you so much. Yeah, I do find, you know, talking to your kids about, uh, you know, how we're not perfect. You know, we make mistakes right. too. It just, it lifts a burden off of yourself too that you're not always supposed to be on and, um, you know, perfect. You know, we have bad days too yeah. bad moments absolutely um, yeah absolutely. for sure well linda thank you so much as i said i'm gonna link everything below i don't know if you're coming to back to new york anytime soon um i don't know we might okay so. <laughs> well i hope to be there and i'll definitely share it from your um instagram if you are coming okay. back soon because yeah i think it your program is amazing and i think you guys are just doing amazing work all over the world well we cherish your prayers we really do and um God is faithful. You can trust him just one moment at a time. Yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah. I really appreciate it. And I will um, talk to you soon. I hope you have a great okay, day. Okay, great. Okay, thank you. Thank you. you. Mm -hmm. <clears throat>